And uh, here we have the Pepper, the robot here in CB 2017. So what's the latest uh, with Pepper? Uh, I mean, we're here today to um, introduce I mean, our ecosystem of partners. I mean, uh, we have been since last year developing a network of partners, over 70 partners in Europe, who are developing a vertical solution uh, on the robots. So, I mean, these partners are providing, I would say, the last software layer on the robot. And so, do you work Hi. on this? Yes, we work on, uh, on Pepper. So what so, are you doing with this? We are developing software for healthcare, for example, or retail shops. Healthcare and retail shops. So there's uh, all kinds of specific use cases that can be developed, right? Yeah, and basically, I mean, as you know, SoftBank Robotic, we are the company who's developing the platform and all the software that make that robot alive, and also all the software that allow our partners to develop the last layer of a solution. And typically, humanizing technology are focusing on retail and healthcare. But I mean, we have other partners here, I mean, and uh, we're showcasing. Are they using it? Stop. Is it okay? Can you do with the robot, Maren? Hello, I speak Deutsch. Schade, dann vielleicht das nächste Thema. Das? Okay. Das hier? Ja, yeah. das hier. Noch spannender wird es, wenn ich Kunden... So, there's a... It's usually a paper when it's in a store or a supermarket or uh, somewhere. It's like a... It gets attention grabber, right? It's yeah, but, it, but, but it's, it's more than that, you know. We, we, we have been now deploying projects in Europe, such as in a Carrefour Apple Market, where the robot is a wine advisor, is a, wine, is a sommelier. Uh, uh, we, we have Pepper on board, or Costa Cruz, where the robot is an hostess, welcoming passenger on board, answering, you know, the frequently asked question about how do I connect to the Wi-Fi. So we are working, you know, with persons such as PwC here. We are really developing use case for Pepper in, uh, I mean, on the Costa Cruz ships as well on Audi car dealers, you know. So there's one Pepper on a ship. There is 30 Pepper on on, on the Costa Cruz ships. We are um, 30, yeah. We are welcoming passengers in 30 different ships. In five different ships, you know. So there's like we're, six we're giving, each. yeah, we are giving information about the daily activities. <laughs> There's uh, unlimited possibilities in the movement and the sounds and the speech and AI. There's lots of stuff. There is a lot of stuff. I will not say unlimited because, I mean, we believe that the humanoid robot. So, I mean, he has more or less the same limit in terms of the human, you know, in terms of, of behavior, as you know. You want to say something else? Yeah. Yeah. Does it work? Thank you. You can certainly get the last answers from my human colleagues. They are here to help you. If you want, we can record a special message which I will send to the manager. Would you like to? Sure. So what is this demo going on here? Uh, there was a satisfaction survey demo. But I mean, that robot is demoing all the capabilities of a robot in retail, I mean, tourism and healthcare. So, I mean, you know. Uh, so are we going here in tourism? Yeah. So you may ask him, for example, to help you with your booking. Yeah. Manage my booking. Please wait. That's my boarding pass. Can I help you with your booking? Yes, please. Cool. Please show me your booking QR code or fill in your name and booking reference on my tablet. Thanks. Let me retrieve your booking. Hello, Mr. About it. Here is your next flight. How can I help you? I want to change my seat. I want to change my seat. Let's change your seat. Oh, there are very few seats available. Only two on the top floor. Would you prefer to be seated next to the aisle or next to a window? Next to a window, please. Window. Okay. I give you the seat H5. It is located on the top floor next to a window, so no one will wake you up during the night to take a walk. Is this okay for you? Yeah, thanks a lot. Do you need something else? Send my boarding pass. Send me my boarding pass. 
I can send your forwarding pass if you give me your phone number. So, uh, do you have airlines doing this already? Please fill in on my tablet. We're not yet. That was something we've, we would develop. A potential use case. That's definitely a potential use case, you know. And basically, that just, you know. So, when you go to a self check in, you can actually be there with the robot. Right Instead of having the kiosk, and we, I don't know if you experience the kiosk, but if you experience as the passenger is pretty poor, the robot is help you to uh, to do the things correctly, you know. But I mean, that's in case of the airport. But I mean, we have companies using robot as a receptionist also. So you come to see it, you say I have an appointment for someone, you send an SMS or an email, and uh, the person is coming to uh, to receive you. This guy's got a, a tie. Uh, it's got a butterfly. What does it do, this guy? Uh, I mean, that's uh, the solution of another partner. Where the, you know, the robot is providing various services. I mean, he's unfortunately he's in German, and my German is not too good. He speaks German, this guy. Yes. Yeah. So who are you? And what are you, which company? I'm Morris from ICS Group. So what and is the demo? This is Pepper. So for example, that is a monster. The monster. So you've Something programmed like a whole bunch yeah. of different uh, movements. Yeah. It's a Japanese company originally, and we are a German company, ICS Group, and we do the development of the software. So. How, is it, how is it to work on software on the Pepper? How does it? How does it? How do you, what do you think about it? About the software? Yeah. yeah it's, is it a cool platform? The language is Python. So that's a program language, and then you can program the robot by Python. Just Python? Just Python. So is it easy? More or less, I'm not a programmer. So I'm only the salesman who tries to sell. So I'm hoping there's a lot of traction in Germany. Uh, some companies that want to get this. How is it going with the traction in Germany? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have a lot of opportunities, and that's why we're, we're here at Sebit. I mean, to give you opportunity to our partners to uh, present the first prototype of solution we have been developing is just the first step. We will be improving that, but I mean, yeah, you know, as we know, you know, there are a lot of interest in retail, a lot of interest in tourism. I mean, companies like Deutsche Bahn already are investigating. Media Mart in, in Germany are looking at the robots. Uh, we mentioned together Costa Cruz and their German subsidiary, Ida Cruz, are also, you know, already testing robots on their ships. So the interest in terms of, you know, we talk here about digi digitalization and digital, the robot is the, uh, really the, the best compromise between human and digital because it's a humanoid platform and it's providing in physical place the power of internet. And that's really the value today for businesses with humanoid robots. And the Pepper is still the best humanoid uh, uh, robot that's for mass production, right? I mean, there is no other company today that has sold as many uh, uh, robots as we did. Sorry? You're the leader. We're the leader today. I mean, yeah. Hopefully, we we'll, we we'll start to see you know some Chinese company coming on the market, which you know it's always good and frightening to see competitors. But we also know that if there is no competitor, there is no market. So we're pretty happy to see that you know the market is moving. I mean, in Europe, in Japan, and the US. But yeah, I mean, we know that we're the leader. But it's also a challenge because that just forced us to continue to invest in research and investment because. Pepper, Pepper is a wonderful product, but we are still, you know, need to be ready for the next step, and uh, that's the thing we're working on. And uh, it, has, has things changed in this year when uh, uh, SoftBank has acquired ARM? Do you feel there's uh, even more acceleration in the future potential of uh, merging, uh, and developing robotics, and also IoT, and getting everything to work together? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a strategic move for SoftBank as a company. I mean, uh, it hasn't yet impacted the robotic division of, of SoftBank of, as we are, but I mean, we already have contact with ARM. And in fact, we are using ARM technology on our robots. You know, that's already... Is it public, better. what ARM? Sorry? What chip do you use? We use an uh, old uh, ARM 11 uh, that, in fact, is uh, act as a microcontroller to uh, schedule and synchronize all the other master controllers that we have at the uh, motors level. There's many microcontrollers in there, right? Yeah, there is a big on, on each motor. You have a, a DS chip microcontroller, then you get the ARM and you get the CPU itself. So, uh, uh, embedded on the tablet, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a 
huge potential for things to. Uh, I'm looking for the future robots. You, you also had another one, uh, Romeo, right? So it's uh, walking around. R Romeo, it's a bit of an unusual robot for a subbank robotic because the robots we do design, I mean, we normally design them to go directly into mass production and to be affordable. Romeo is for us, you know, like a Formula One. It's our research platform. And we use that for something that is going to be a key development for the company, is to be able to develop a robot that will act as a companion at home to serve people losing their autonomy. So it's an ongoing project. And I mean, yeah, I mean, we already are working with a, a half a dozen of a European research lab to continue to make progress on, on Romeo. But I mean, Romeo, technology is used in paper you know we have been using some of romeo technology on paper but i mean you will imagine that i mean yeah I mean, we have now romeo on paper and we continue research we continue development and our ambition is to come with a wider family I mean, yeah, to, to, today, I mean, the paper we're showing this year is not the same old version last year. There has been improvements in some of the uh, John, in some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, ele mechanical elements of the robot, as well as the tablet. We have, you know, changed the tablet we had last year for a more efficient tablet on the robot. And we. That's a key challenge, you know, specifically with players such as Alexa coming on the market. They define a new expectation level for the uh, voice reconnection uh, on, on devices. Uh, that's something that, you know, we're, we started to work a long time ago, in fact, but I mean, we're close to bring the results on the robots in terms of changing the hardware and improving the hardware to improve the voice recognition. Is there any chance we can have uh, for consumer? Are you, uh, you can't, uh, I, I'm not trying to get any secrets, but I think it would be great if there was a consumer edition, a more affordable version. I think we, we all know that, I mean, to, to become big on that market, we will need at some stage to have a consumer product. We think it's still, I mean, still a bit early. We still need to work, you know, on a lot of technology. I mean, it's key also to, you know, get the right level of natural language processing capability on the robot. Consumers are expecting to be able to talk, interact with the robot as they do with a human. So unless we're ready for that, it's going to be difficult to go to market. Cool.